What's up, guys? Hey, friends. Greetings, fellas. We have an offer for you. We'd like to make a small deal. We have an interesting proposition. Get the new shiny Dota 2 ticket. Buy the new Starlighter ticket. Support us with ticket purchases. And we promise to show you our best. We'll show you excellent and magnificent Dota. We will make sure you see some amazing games. Take the first step into the next season. We are counting on you. Help us make Star Ladder 11 awesome. We will see you again sooner than you think. Thank you for your support. And your contribution will make us a little bit happier. Thank you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our second best of three series of the day is now underway. Root Gaming versus Team E-Hug. This is the loser bracket finals for the playoffs here of Star Ladder Season 11 America. Got into this draft a little late. They started early, much to our surprise. So glad to be here in it to win it. I'm Zayori. This guy's Merlini, and he is more than enthusiastic today. This is an elimination match, too. This Even is Even more exciting. Oh, yeah, baby. Somebody's crying at the end of this one. All right. So, Root Gaming. How dare you laugh at other people's misfortunes? That's right. You know what? You're right. I, wanna, I really want to institute the moment of silence policy. Whenever a team remaining. is eliminated, you spend 30 seconds in silence looking serious and somber Five to reflect on the seriousness remaining. that is elimination. No? That'd be a lot of silences. I know. That's the point. It's kind of like... Why can't you just be happy for the team that won? Why why can't it not fucking matter? That's what I don't understand. Why 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 is it <laughs> discussion for another day? Jesus. I was about to Dia go off on a pick. tangent, man. We we're about to spend this whole draft talking about moments of silence. Root gaming. Not the root gaming you're thinking of. You'll see no Tubby the Fat. The only one that is really still a classic is your boy JC over there. His birthday's right around the corner and this is his day. All right. Sue Mail, that's the one I was talking about. He's uh, the 15-year-old prodigy as they've been calling him. He plays a mean storm spirit. Apparently, Trouf has been standing in him in Danger 7. I Ten believe they were playing yesterday, remaining. but... Um, yeah, not on the original Five crew. Seconds remaining. So we'll see what uh, what kind of skills they have, if they can really stick it to Team E-Hug. They've Reserve got their full time. roster that we saw in this series earlier, just uh, knocked down 2-0 against Team Fire, who is waiting in the best of five grand finals for the oh. winner of this series. Man, so these, these odds are ugly. 73-28 in favor of the E-Hug lug. You know, I don't know that that's that bad. I don't know that that's that ridiculous, honestly. I haven't um, seen too much of Root recently. Well, the thing is, their roster keeps changing. So, like, I, I started casting Root at the tiebreakers, you know, two days ago, and Trout and Danger 7 were not on the team. Don't they have stand-in rules? I don't know. I really don't, because it changes very quickly. So this roster, all we have is yesterday. And, you know, they, they played Leviathan. Remaining. They they beat them. They lost to E-Hug yesterday 2-1. So it was seconds, a pretty close remaining. series. I remember talking to Coddle Guy about it. So I think they're somewhat evenly matched. I think those odds Reserve could be a value time. bet. For, uh, for Root, maybe a little more 50-50, but first pick Night Stalker. Maybe we should talk about these heroes a little bit. Well, Ehug just got rocked by Night Stalker and a Brewmaster, so... Ooh, nice. Nice and spicy. Team the Ursa Bear. Okay, so we saw an Ursa... Was it not yesterday, but the day before? Now, oh man, all these all of these matches have run together between the tiebreakers and, and this, and I forget who was doing it, but we did see an Ursa pick up. It backfired. <laughs> I want to say it was Complexity that might have tried it in the tiebreakers. Five oh, my memory's so foggy, remaining. Merlini, it's embarrassing. So what is this, Carry Wraith King offlane Jug? Mm -hmm. Probably. Um, Root Gaming, Radiant team not band. the team that's actually notorious for the position one Wraith King. I believe that is Leviathan, and that's Shredder who likes to do it that way. It goes for the Radiance on the core Wraith King. So it could be, I think uh, Coddle Guy told me Dyer that Danger 7 pick. played Jug on the 1 in the safe lane the other day. So that could very well be the option here. They have um, a pretty good aggro try. Venge A, the combo that E-Hug should have gotten in game one of the last series. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Wraith King, decent here, I suppose. They have the longevity to survive a Brewmaster Ultimate, which is 
you know, you always want to look for some way to bru Ten deal with a brew, either a Skywrath or a long duration silence to kill him, something like Five Cold Snap where you can't cast his ultimate, you want mobility with Ember or Weaver, you want magic immunity with BKB Ten or Juggernaut, remaining. or something tanky like a Wraith King. So I think they're very well equipped Five to deal with a brew. Remaining. I don't even know how brew made it to the second phase. I guess maybe so I three is actually... Mean. Uh, the effects of it are coming out a lot sooner. And we have the Shadow Friend! Alright, everyone's favorite friend from the shadows. Wow, this is interesting. I don't know who's playing what. Uh, Sumail is a core player. They banned out his Storm Spirit, as I talked about before. He, te uh, he has been tending to go mid. Um, that's the only one that I know for sure. Mm -hmm. Danger7, I think, is a carry remaining. player. Trough. Pretty flexible, but tends to be a core also, so that leaves Five Joik and your boy JC remaining. on the supports. You can see it. I like Shadow Fiend here. They have a lot of melee heroes, which Shadow Fiend, you know, that GG Requiem, uh, you kind of have to kite it. And on top of that, they have, like, good bursts, too, with it. With the 325 damage on the Shadow Raise, you have a like, Wraith King stun into, like, a double raise onto a Brew. It should almost be enough to kill him, especially if followed up by, like, an AA stun or another raise, so... I like their lineup. I like the Shadow Friend. Okay. You be, are, how do you how do you feel about Shadow Fiend in general, not just this game? Ooh, the line. Uh, he used to get owned by Brew really hard, like just lane dominated, and then Shadow Fiend would have to rush a BKB, and then mm -hmm. th he doesn't do any damage because he doesn't have any mobility. So there were a lot of um, a lot of things not working for Shadow Fiend in the last couple of patches. Same with like Ra Viper and Razor. Mm -hmm. Like Viper owns him in lane. Razor just runs at him, BKB or not, and Shadow Fiend really can't man up against him. So it's a rough life. Yeah, well, with with all those heroes falling off a lot, I would say that Shadow Fiend has a place, especially on Radiant. Dire Shadow Fiend not as strong, but they do have a very formidable Roshan lineup. Four out of their yeah. five heroes are very good for Roshan. I guess even AA is good at defending Roshan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot, of da a lot of AoE damage in the pit. So this E-Hug roster, much, well, both remaining. a little unconventional, I guess, but uh, Ursa Lion here, Infinity Five Ursa. Uh, we'll see where they, I'm, I'm curious how the lanes are going to come out for both teams, quite frankly, here, Merlini. A lot I of like the lion, they too. Could do it. You like the lion? Weren't you just talking shit Prepare about lion the other day? Battle. Me? Yeah, was it you? Somebody, somebody's on the anti-lion hype train. No, that's gods, dude. Is it gods who doesn't like the lion? Oh, you're right, it's gods who doesn't it's not like me, the dude. lion. I like lion. Okay, you're a big Lion fan. I'm not big a huge Lion fan, but I think he has a place. Demon Witch guy. He's like a mix in between um, Lion and Ro or Lena and Rasta. Mm -hmm. Like, you have the instant blink hex, but you also have a lot of damage to follow up, um, but you don't have push. So, yeah. I don't know, kind of a mix in between it's the kind two. of the basis of the God's argument, I think, is that you look at Lion, why not just pick Rasta? Similar initiation powers, obviously less bursty, but so much more utility with the wards. It's all around a better package, but... yeah. Probably putting words in his mouth a little bit, but I, I don't think know. that was the, the gist of it. It's okay. He's also has more move speed, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. when, uh, slightly more than the good old Rasta Pasta, who's abysmally slow. And he has good base damage now. 52, I think it got increased by, what, like 6 or 7 or something? So mm -hmm. that makes him a lot better at zoning out. Yep. All right, we'll see how it works out. Dyer put both their observers down near the Radiant Jungle. One to block the pole camp here, and one to get some vision of the entryway, as well as that bottom rune that they will camp out here for the next 8 to 10 seconds. Radiant side, their first observer comes down, get a little bit of vision right here the into the pole begins. camp area. And their second will come out in front of the Damn Radiant Ancient. One oh bounty God. apiece, one goes the way of the Brewmaster, one the Wraith King. And with that, we can introduce some rosters here. The loser bracket final, Star Ladder America, season... 11 land finals right around the corner in beautiful, sunny Kiev, Ukraine. We have a little feisty dog over here. We do. We have a corgi named Piper who has taken Merlini's heart. Who knew you were such a dog man? I like dogs. I, I hate cats. I know. I, I've seen it. I never thought I'd see you spoon with an animal. <laughs> Radiant side, Team E-Hug. We've got Sna on the Demon Witch Lion. He'll be supporting Infinity on the Ursa Warrior. Lust takes the Disruptor headed to the bottom lane. SN7. We'll take the Night Stalker mid, and that puts MJW in the offlane here with the Brewmaster. He'll be up against Trouth, who is solo safe lane on the Juggernaut. That puts Sumail Oh, mid. yeah, I forgot Trouth loves it. Here. Like, I don't know what it is. He does. Uh oh, down bottom, Infinity initiated on, and before we can even introduce the rosters, there could be a first blood. One more auto attack will do it. Joik really wants this one, and not going to find it. But uh, Sal will be there, keeps the Ursa alive. Now Joik on the back foot. He'll just barely live. It's a slugfest in the bottom lane, Merlini, but Root... 
will be okay. Your boy JC getting clicked down. Snock coming in. He's got a hex in 10. And not going to be soon enough. I think in that situation, uh, Earth Spike is better since it's AoE. Mm -hmm. If you're on a three-on-one situation, I definitely think that level one hex is better, but it's debatable whether or not you should pick up and pay all level one. It's not a no-brainer in a three-on-three. -three. Well, some spinning action on top, so I don't actually know how well the Juggernaut will fare in this particular lineup. He's already out of mana, but he does have the Pro Man Shield to deal with Brewmaster, and his base damage is insane now. Mm -hmm. He has, what, yeah. 64? Well, he's got that's what, seven, shield, so. seven agility, though. Yep. Still pretty good. So pretty good. Down bottom, we'll see initiation once more. They're going on to Lust. Chilling Touch has been used. They're going to try to burst him down. One more volley ought to do it. They'll get the kill before Joyt goes down. He will tick to the Thunderstrike. First Blood goes the way of the Dire. Now they get another kill. It'll be on the Wraith King. And the Impale from Sna there, securing that one to give Root a nice advantage in their aggro tri -lay. Man, Urshock is just so good. Six seconds on that slow is one of the best AoE slows in the game. It's actually insane. How good that spell is. <laughs> and I think he got a three-man stomp right there. Mm -hmm. He's stomping on fools. Yep. Not a bad way to get things started. Sumail Shadowfiend. We haven't talked about this mid matchup yet. Shadowfiend getting the better of it, at least for now. 13-5 and five versus the 8-2 and two That's Night Stalker. That's an easy matchup for Shadowfiend. Yeah. Spamming out that void, but it only gets you so many last hits. A gift from the goddess. And how is Jug actually doing against the Brew? He's actually getting the better of him. MJW down by three, well, four he, less He's hits. used all his mana, so he's used three spins thus far. Actually, maybe four. Did he finally use that clarity? Yeah, I don't Yeah, know. I think he's used four Got spins, actually, so... You'd expect that sort of a... Down bottom, Infinity initiated on, and man, this aggro try. You talked about it in the draft, but it is just so potent. The Chilling Touch gives them all the damage they could ever need. You know, they really need a uh, lion to be there to disengage with a, or counter initiate rather, with a AoE Earth Spike. Without that, I mean, destructive kinetic field, but the guy's locked in place for three seconds. Yep. Thank you so much. Well, how is the actual farm looking? They're killing pretty well. Danger 7 has 10 last hits, so well, about on point with the Ursa. Infinity certainly not getting free farm. And it's just going to be a slugfest back and forth. Sna initiates this time, but he gets destroyed. Danger 7 lives to get the XP for it. Infinity will still find the kill. A one for one. And might be able to get another. Your boy JC caught by the Earth Shock. And there you go. It's a two for Joik. Maybe not out of the clear. No mana for a magic missile, but Infinity I think can't he stand the heat under Actually, the tower. Or he had a magic stick. Thinks he can't. He oh, had yeah. a magic stick. He would have been able to turn around. Right. So yeah. nighttime finally hits. Good old Night Soccer does have a TP scroll, maybe Radiant's wanting to thwart some of this pressure on the attack. bottom lane. But again, no rune control on the side of E-Hug. This has been a struggle for them the past few games. Regeneration. It really has. And runes are important. I Yeah, I, I wonder why. I wonder if that's just sort of a general oversight or if it's some sort of a deeper strategy where they, you know, prioritize farming over runes. It seems odd now. We had enough games where it's not just a fluke or... You know, the other team has superior rune control. It's it's a recurring theme now against multiple squads. Yeah. I mean, Night Stalker, he's one of the better rune carriers, too. I yeah. can understand the Invoker game. Okay, yeah, Invoker usually doesn't get bottles, so you might not check. But still, he's Quas Exor, I think, which is a little bit better for checking runes since you can just send a Forge Spirit. But just giving it continuously to the min lane Ooh. just, you know, makes that good old XP and gold graph not so good in your favor. Mm-hmm. Uh, blah, blah, blah. He's picked up one Drunken Haze. Yay. There you go. Some value right there. I feel like I've been seeing that, like, value first point in Drunken Haze a lot less frequent, a lot less frequently. Well, it depends on who you're against. Yeah. If you're against a right clicker like Wraith King or Shadow Fiend, I think it is very important to pick up one fa one point. Yeah. It's also good for Roshan, e Even too. against, like, heroes that are decent right clickers, I just feel like a, a lot more brews of airing are airing on the side of get that extra crit, get the extra dodge, and just max out the drunken brawler but well at least it's not a no-brainer anymore i think before yes. the before the nerf to drunken brawler i think it was a no-brainer to go 411 but now it's like well you kind of do want that extra crit now and then yeah and he just has mana issues i think that's almost the bigger bigger problem is if he's not just bottle especially with the nerf to bottle crow now if you're not getting runes you have to use your mana a little more a little more safely but Mid lane still going pretty well for the Shadow Fiend. SN just hanging in there. Only about three or, or about five last hits behind now. 
Sumail, like I've said a couple of times, the Storm Spirit player. Here's how his Shadow Fiend will go, but Trout. Uh oh, he walks into the danger zone, gets Hex stunned up. Does have a Battle Fury, and that'll give him magic immunity for now. Has an ultimate here, might be able to turn this on to Lust. He gets silenced. Trout still gets the kill, saves his ultimate. It's a one for one. I think he'll settle for that. I think he could have killed the Medi Omni. I think I guess the cast on the Night Stalker of Crippling Fear was a little bit too fast. Yeah. But they both have cast on. Oh, down bottom, Ursa will get picked off once more. Your boy JC in Danger 7. Picking up a simultaneous kill. And oh, Sume on the mid catches S7 with a couple of quick raises. Nicely played. Just gets a little bit of vision and drops the hammer. Quick fingers on uh, the... Prodigy here. First pick. Attack. Night Stalker not working out too well for them. Man, look at his gold. 1900 after Boots Bottle and a Wraith. Yeah. So what's the item trajectory for uh, Shadow Fiend this game, Merlini? What are you thinking? Is this well, a blink kind of game? He needs a BKB at one point. I would say blink stood really nice. Especially if Wraith King gets a blink, then he can just follow up and just own people. Especially heroes like Disruptor and Lion. Yeah, I, I, I like the blink here also. Up top, Trial going to find himself in trouble once more. Primal Split used this time. More than enough damage to bring down the Juggernaut. Well, I guess worth the split. And now they'll move into this tower, perhaps. Brewmaster intercepts the creep wave, and Shadow Fiend not going to go for the blink right away. Instead, opts for the Midas here at the seven and a half minute mark. Courier going to bring it on the way. Still a very good timing, as I think it's bringing back his bottle also here. Well, Disruptor yeah. going on a very Dyer's unusual build with the two two zero, no kinetic field. I think Dyer's one point kinetic field is really good. Two and a half second duration. Mm -hmm. It's good value. That is interesting. You don't see that so so frequently. I mean, Thunderstrike, sometimes a good one-point wonder, but he'll put a little extra extra emphasis onto it here for some good damage output. We'll see what he grabs at level 5. Sumail just retreats into the jungle, clears out some mud golems here. Wraith King, he is uh, not going into Midas territory, at least not quite yet. Danger 7, falling towards the tail end of the pack in terms of last hits, but it's been a, a worthy sacrifice. He's helped keep the Ursa down. Ursa with only 31 last hits. Uh, just phase boots now with 600 gold. Nowhere close to a blink, not even lifesteal yet, so... I mean, this is a point where Ursa getting free farm could be looking towards Roche as a possibility. I think it's so worse for the Wraith King, though. You think like, so? Just because Wraith King is much more difficult to work well in this level 6 to 11 range, because you have that super long reincarn. Yeah. So he, he kind of needs items to compensate for that, where that is Ursa is just like, whatever. Ursa is still r relatively strong in the early mid. Yeah. Even without items. He still does a lot of damage, and as you said, the Roshan control is... Well, someone's got to be a sacrifice. They've, they've yeah. got three carries across the, th the three lanes, so... I mean, do you think like the Juggernaut's better suited for it? Obviously not the Shadow Fiend. So I think of, of what they have at their disposal, eh, it's okay for the... Oh, the things are going very well for them. It's just... I, I suppose keeping one for one down is, is good for them, because Night Stalker isn't getting that much farm, and if... If Wraith King doesn't farm, at least Juggernaut and uh, Shadow Fiend will be able to catch up or carry the weight rather. And Shadow Fiend is really, really farmed. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, things slowing down a little bit. Trout, how's his life looking? Well, not so hot. His farm a little bit lackluster. Take a look at net worth. See where he stands. Yeah, just kind of middle of the pack. Gets his Aquila. I wonder what, do you know what build Trough likes to go for? I he feel goes like very many different builds. Okay. He goes like bots, Manta, he goes Blink, he goes Scepter, he does yeah. whatever he thinks he needs. I feel like Scepter Jug is easy to underestimate. You know, some, I, I've definitely had my share of games like, oh, you went for a Scepter, ha ha ha, and then uh, it's just the amount of time that he's immune while he's bouncing around doing Radiant's damage is just gross and key fights. Attack. Yeah, and the cooldown is really important. Hey, yeah. Some initiation down bottom as they rotate through. Your boy JC taking a little Thunderstrike damage, but Root, they've got all five down here. Shadow Fiend will venture back towards the mid to continue farming, but Trouth with an Omni Slash at the ready, leading the charge. Lion will make it back in the lane, and Infinity and Lust just turtle up behind the tower. Lust says, screw it, I'm TPing out, and Infinity will linger around. And they get a Sentry down, an Observer Ward kill, so... It's not completely in vain for Root, but they don't get quite as much as they would have hoped for. Ten minutes in, MJW will secure his Brewmaster Blink Dagger. A pretty good timing there, especially for an offline brew. Pretty solid. Yeah, but look at Shadow Fiend. 6,200 Fiend is huge, dude. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> he had a seven-minute Midas, and he's just been unchecked. He's also picked up a kill. So that'll, that'll happen. Just imagine if he was Radiant and had uh, easier access to these neutrals.
Yeah. I mean, on Dire, it's not so bad. It's further to get to the camp, but you have access to three camps instead of two. So there's a trade-off there. It's not so bad. Danger 7 rotates now into the safe lane. Looks like Wraith King probably pulling for either a Blink or a Midas. I think it'll be the Blink I if they need someone they to they don't need create some space. Yeah. Ooh. Mask of Madness will hold that thought, though. As Danger 7 initiated on up top. MJW comes in. Sna wraps around the side. Now, he does have a Reincarnate. They'll start draining his mana. Won't be able to do it soon enough, but Trauf is on his way in. So is Joik. SNA in big trouble. He gets killed first. And now a stun on the Lush should be more than enough to secure a kill here. Primal Split has been used, and SN on his way. Sumail channels the Requiem. Joik just tries to TP out. He'll be successful. They get the kill on the Night Stalker, and now MJW. He's done with his split. Beautiful Ice Blast will connect as he blinks backwards. Good call from your boy JC. They can't follow up for a kill, but still a great exchange for Root. Makes it 9-6, to six, and now they will push into this Tier 1 tower. I was hoping Ursa or something would get something out of that trade, but... Nope, looks like he is just farming bottom, trying to make his way towards that Blink Dagger, and trading a Reincarn for a Brewmaster Ultimate and three kills. Yeah, that is that's a good one. Radiance and they'll get the tower, tower off of it, Infinity, chipping at the tower down Diamond's bottom, but Joik will be here to attack. try and kind of push him back. 2,000 gold up on Infinity. He will have a Blink Dagger soon, but Wraith King has already grabbed his. So, as I pointed out before, just sacrificing some of the Wraith King to stop this Ursa from having control of the map is making a big difference here. As now Danger 7 showing it off, goes in on the Snop. Ice Blast for good measure, forces the Shatter. Lion goes down, now it's Ehog that come in, looking for some counter kills. Glimpse back onto Danger 7 into a Clap Crit. Does use the last remaining bit of his mana, and he will go down here. His team is left and behind. Ursa coming in for the cleanup, and the big bad bear will end the killing spree and get a little extra gold under his belt here, making his rotation well worth it. And finally, they get level 6 on the uh, Disruptor, and looking on Root side, they are taking a huge Ancient stack, a 4 stack right now for all... Oh, yeah, and he went the Mask of Madness build. Nice. Yep, turbo farm in here. Big old fatty stack of Ancients. Looks like a nice uh, three stack here. Four stack. Four, it was a four stack. Okay. Two Triceratops. Ah, okay. Very nice. Huge farm gun for the team. Sharing is carrying, as they say. Trout up to about 2,000 gold. And, oh, what did he pick up? Is that a Midas on the way? Nope, that's BOTs. Okay. BOT's first Dyer's item for Trout. That's fun. Under attack. I like BOT first jug. You like BOT first on most heroes. Yeah, but I, I think it's really nice on Jug, so you can chase supports down with the spin. It's important that you have high mobility in fights, because you need to be able to bounce in and out with your defensive cooldowns. Oh, can they get a glimpse on him? No. Thinking about it? No, won't get it. Oh, they don't have a reveal. But uh, the Swag Machine, yeah, Invisibility Rune. He has his Blink Dagger on the way. It's on the Courier. So still top of the net worth charts by a huge amount. I mean, there's just been no pressure on him. He's had complete run of the map now with the Ancients. Eek. They need to make something happen. This Ursa needs some momentum. 3-2-2 two, two is his score right now. <laughs> no life steal hasn't moved into the Roche pit yet, but here we go. Down bottom, they want Infinity. Ice Blast will not connect. Still gets stunned by Danger 7, and they might still have the damage to do it. Joik comes in, hits him with a Magic Missile, even gets a crit to boot. Does have mana for one more stun, but the Wraith King won't commit for it, as there are reinforcements on the way. Your boy JC initiated on by the Night Stalker. He'll go down now on the backside of the fight. Disruptor blown up by the Shadow Fiend. Forces out a Static Storm. Joik will just TP home, or will he? Not going to happen there as Infinity comes in and takes him down. So it's a one for two. One support on E-Hug for the two supports of Root. Radiance kind of an awkward fight as multiple little attack. engagements broke out. That Shadow Fiend does get a kill out of it, so not all bad for Root Gaming. Yeah, not so bad. As long as their three cores keep getting farmed, which it looks like they are. Mm -hmm. Still holding on to their nice 4,000 gold, 3,000 experience lead. Sumail still just working those Ancients. Yeah, they're doing a really good job of stacking. E-Hug actually is noticeably bad at stacking. Ah! Yeah, I don't think they've stacked once this game. So they don't have the best squad for taking down stacks, especially not this Ursa who doesn't even have life steal yet. Well, what do you think about this this Ursa build? Blink now into presumably a BKB. I mean, I feel like Vlad's rush is the the core on Ursa, or at least has been for a while, so we can effectively farm the jungle and at least a mask take rush. Yeah, or just the casual mask. Yeah, I think those are. This uh, feels a little weird. Ursa's really bad if you don't take Roshan. That's his, one of his primary strengths. 
Bottom Snog gets caught out by an AA Ice Blast. Danger 7 is there and will be able to force a shatter. Gets off the finger and forces out a long cooldown reincarnation. So I guess it was worth it for the Lion to use the finger. Obviously not worth it to trade a kill for just the reincarnation. Uh-oh, Invis heading in. They do have Omni Slash up. Looks like somebody Infinity. is going to die. Yep. Oh, it's a level 2 Omni Slash also. Here we go. The stun onto Infinity. Trout saving the ultimate for now. Just goes into the Blade Fury. This might be enough. Infinity with the quick feet here. In comes Disruptor. Hits him with a silence. MJW gets stunned up. Trout still looking for his enemy. Can't find him. Danger 7. Force the TP home. As will Trout. A huge rotation from Ehug though. All five heroes end up coming down. Infinity will Radiant live. Structures and are fortified. as will the members Radiant's of middle tower is More under space attack. for Shadow Fiend. Radiant's middle Shadow tower Fiend will even finish fallen. off the tier 1 tower man. Sick AA ultimate. Caught the Ursa. Where was he? Yeah. On his way back. Radiant's wow. Middle tower that is, is good. Under attack. Hey, it's Inky. Oh, never mind. It's the Oculopus. Damn squid. I've seen a lot of good uh, AA plays so far today in our two best of threes. Mm -hmm. but your boy JC here doing a good job doing the classic build. Loves a haste right into the hand of Midas. Not that far away. Here's an interesting item pickup though. Sumail going for the Yules on the Shadow Feet. I don't know why. I guess Yules Blink is nice, but that's a little peculiar. Yules into Requiem. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense on paper. I've never seen somebody actually do it though. I've seen it in pubs. Hmm. What's interesting here, though, is someone else can just get the Yules if they want to try to do that pickoff. I mean, it takes a lot more coordination well, to who, set it who up. Who else would get it? <laughs> the Jug? I, I don't know. It's a good question. I guess, yeah, I guess that's a good point. Sports aren't going to be able to farm it up. AA wants the Ags and Venge. Well, somebody's got to play the five. They just forced out a Brewmaster ult with it. Oh, yeah. You're right. Cool. All right. Well, <laughs> Value Town so far. They'll smoke you uh, near the Roche Pit. And they'll just move on in. Bounty Rune is there. Let's take a look at Radiant Vision. They have one ward down on the map right now, and it's this big one here. Up Dyer's on the high ground outside of the pit. Five. Oh, SN7. He walks into the wrong place at the wrong time. He gets caught and destroyed. And now with the Night Stalker dead, they'll feel pretty safe in the Roche Pit. Night Stalker does have a buyback here. Tier 1 tower standing in the bottom lane. He could consider a buyback to contest, but no, they're not going to go for it. They'll just hand it over. Too easy for Root. I mean, the Night Stalker pick just hasn't really done anything for them. Like, it, it doesn't make any of them feel scared at night. They just farm out wherever. Like, you have the tanky Wraith King. You have the Jug who can yeah. just spin and TP. You have the super farm Shadow Fiend who is in your jungle somewhere that you don't actually know. Wraith King up top. Doesn't have an ultimate here. Gets fingered and stunned, but there's support inbound. Joik looking for an aggressive swap. Can he actually find it? The blink forward from Danger 7. Yep, won't even need the swap. Just a simple magic missile to bring him down. Now Infinity comes back in to reinitiate. Gets the kill on Wraith King and will TP home. Trow, no mana for the ultimate, but the swap from Joik will interrupt the TP. Infinity on the run. Can they actually chase him down? Blade Fury up in five. Jukin and Jivan blinks over the ravine and he'll make his way into a regeneration rune. One lucky bear. Regeneration. Or is he? Blasted by an Ice Blast. From downtown. Well, 15 to 10 route with a pretty sizable lead. 7,500 gold and about 6,000 XP. No big surprise there. You know, I have to say, I'm also not a big fan of the Midas on uh, Night Stalker. I feel like it can be all right if you're really balling out of control and you can get, like, you know, a 10 minute Midas and just keep on chugging. But he got this when he didn't have a huge amount of momentum and his gold farm is good, but. It just doesn't make him scary, you know? Yeah, I, I think it's good if you're scary and the other teams, like, huddle around their towers and not farming and yeah. you need to out-farm them. But if you're already in a... I don't know, it just doesn't... If you're not on that, like, super aggressive foot already and it's kind of like a, a break-even almost, then it's just... it's not worth it. Mid lane, glimpse back onto the Venge and Joik. Yep, he's gonna get picked here. Easy kill for Lust as Ehug rotate four and may try to transition this into a tier one tower push. So, sh the only reason I don't really like the Yules, oh, well, it's strained, firstly. Secondly, it do it takes up a valuable slot, and Shadow Fiend is almost a uh, six slot. And a lot of his items sure are cheap. He's not going to die here. No, Trauf actually caught inside of the Static Storm. He has an ultimate, but he can't use it. He'll have the Aegis of the Immortal, though, coming right back up. Sumail brings down the Disruptor as he joins the party. Trauf will just back this train up. 
has the Blink ultimate ready, but we'll save it for now. Shadow Fiend picks up his BKB. That'll be on the way via the Courier Ice Blast. Can be off the mark. Scouts out E-Hug, sees their defensive position, and they'll be safe. Pushing up the mid lane. I mean, he has his BKB. Look at this guy. Swagger Fiend. I mean, he's just massive right now. 15k net worth. The next highest farmer is Night Stalker at 8.2. Here's the setup onto the Brewmaster. Channels the Requiem, but gets hexed and stunned. There's the split. Oh, Sumail could be in trouble. BKB on gets swapped back by Joyk. But they're going to chase him down. Your boy JC coming in, as is Danger7. They jump onto SN7. Sumail channels the ultimate. It will cost them their Ancient Apparition as Infinity joins the party. A couple of low health heroes on Ehug, but they will be forced. Uh, are not going to be taken out, it doesn't look like. Danger 7 actually reinitiating here, and just gets blown up by the finger. Doesn't have the mana for the reincarnation. So an awkward fight from Root. They do not come out ahead. Needless to say, it's a 3 for nil. Shadow Fiend barely lives. Yeah, the Yules initiate. <laughs> I mean, it's a cute idea to try and blow up the Brew before he can split, but I mean, there was support there. You can't be that crazy with it, just jumping into the tier 2. I, I hope Lion's not nearby. You know, that's a, that's a bit of a gamble. Yeah, well, they had the defensive swap, but, I mean, he almost died Dyer's before. Middle tower <laughs> has fallen. I mean, that happened. If, that, if that was the contingency plan, they barely got to pull the trigger on it. Oh, Trough coming in, thinking about this onto Infinity, holding the high ground, waiting Radiant's for him to kill the Mud Golem so he can get max bounces. Attack. And this should be a kill, perhaps, as the spin. Infinity juking, jiving. Can he actually live? No. Nope, Trough finds the kill, Ooh. blinks Radiant's away before MJW can do attack. anything. Nice pick off there. Fills up the bottle on the way out. And gets a little bounty for his hard work. He might have been able to turn around on him. I think if he just stands there and tanks with overpower and, and rage, I think... Well, firstly, he'll just able to blink, and secondly, I think they get a return kill out of it. Mm -hmm. But maybe he thought he could juke. Not versus BOTs, dude. Yep. The jug is just a little too speedy. Bottom BKB picked up on the Night Stalker. Another one of these item pickups that... It kind of helps him live, but it's just not scary. Root's not going to look at this and go, I'm shaking, I'm shaking. I think a Vlaz would have been better. I think uh, just go full utility mode well, at this point. They need the armor. I yeah. Think. Counteract. Oh, actually, Brewmaster already has a Vlaz. So start working on the AC, maybe. I don't know. Mm, I think he needs HP now. Just feels like he doesn't fit in. Well, without er without uh, roaching control, he doesn't. Now BOT <laughs> is up on the Shadow Fiend. So Root tricking themselves out with teleportation. It's two BOTs up here before the 25 minute mark. Trough now transitioning into a little bit more of a carry jug, has a Yasha. Maybe just a casual farming tool or the beginnings of a Manta style, time to tell. <laughs> and even little Wraith King coming online here. It was the night before Christmas. And the Maelstrom has delivered in his stocking. So Danger 7 was off to a slow start, but he's still, he's nipping at the heels of that Ursa. He's kept up and farm pretty damn well. Yeah, and they keep psyching Ancients, too. Oh, here we go again. BKB used by Sumail. There's the Requiem. Blows up the Brewmaster. Hello. That bear just got turned into a rug. Okay. Now I see the power of the Yules. Jeez. I didn't think that would be enough damage to one-shot him. I thought it would just get him low, but... Whew. Look at the pings coming out. Look at this. Trout's like, this guy right here. This guy, he knows. Radiance top tower he knows what's good. Attack. It's pretty cool. Well, he popped this BKB that time, too. So, that certainly helped. We found the Brewmaster counter, guys. <laughs> Yule Shadow Fiend. Who would have thought? I guess the Brew is isn't that attack. tanky. Like, if he had an Ags, he'd have some more HP. He needs but BKB. Yeah, no BKB. He's going to go Assault Karas. He buys the Chain and Plate Mail. He's on top. Infinity. Oh, man. Uses the BKB, but Trout just Omni slashes him down with Sumail there, or... It's just structures are fortified. These heroes are just melting, dude. The minus armor. Is under attack. Ouch. Trough, he'll TP home and so will the Shadow Fiend. He'll blink out. Disruptor's just hanging around. Glimpses him back. Sumail uses the Yules. Now just tries to TP home. Knows MJW can't do anything about it, but Lion can. Earth Spike is there, and Snob will get credit for the mega kill streak as they bring down the Shadow Fiend. Close call though. He was just about to TP out of there. He could have just BKB TP. KBTP, yeah. Got a little greedy there. Speaking of BKBs, SN7 uses his in the mid. And 
think intentional, but not a good use of that 10 second BKB charge. Yeah, and this game is kind of damned for whatever build you're going to go. If you get BKB, you get owned by Jug, you get owned by Right Click from Shadow Fiend. If you don't, you'll die to AA and Requiem. It's a well drafted lineup that Root has. I mean, sure, they have a lot of farm too, but. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the graph, see how things are faring numerically. About 5,000 gold, 7,500 XP, still looking pretty good for the Dire. Shadow Fiend, despite dying there, maintaining a pretty significant leg up over everyone else. It's looking ugly. Yeah, so what do you do if you're E-Hug here? I mean, how do you start regaining the momentum? Is it just about smoke ganks since trying to pick Charge people off? Nothing. Continually ganking that Shadow Fiend, drop down bottom, we'll get well, initiated on, but TP's out. Firstly, you work towards a Scepter on Disruptor. I think that's the first thing that you need to worry about because it's, if they're gonna if they're gonna win, it's gonna be a long game mm -hmm. because Root has some really nice late game and they're gonna be really potent in the you know 30 plus minute phase of the game. Secondly, I think they need a Basher on Ursa. Uh, firstly, to just own the BKBs. Um, this way, he can like man up versus people. It's also nice versus Jug when he tries to TP out with spin TP. Mm -hmm. So, those are two things I think they really need to do. Thirdly, is Roshan control, but Roshan is kind of a team effort, and that's something that's really difficult to control when Root has a really good Roshan lineup. So, they can't really contest it, they just have to do it before Root does it. Mm hmm. Okay, we'll see if they can make it happen. It is Root that'll be aggressive here as they move into the Dire Secret Shop. They scout it out with the Wave of Tower. Terror, they see Snaw, and that's an easy Omni Slash. Trial, happy to pick up another one. And there's your Blade Fury TP out. Safe as a daisy. And completes his Manta style. Trial 5-2-2, two, and two, having a pretty good game here. Knows his limits, and like you were pointing out, a hero that he knows all too well. Yeah. Manta style is really good versus the. <laughs> See, just look how badass Sumail is here. His effigy, it's just a regular ass picture of Radiant's a pot. He's just sitting there, under you know, Radiant's fastest, top tower fastest has fingers, fallen. dude. He's just bragging. I like this guy. I like his style. <laughs> Root Gaming, they move right into the Roche pit. This is Roche 2, no cheese yet. Danger 7, just tanking it up. Looks like he will go for the Mjolnir. Oh, they've got a medallion here on Joy, so it's going to be an easy Roche, nice and quick. Ray King getting those crits. Almost Roshan all 16. Has fallen to the he dawn. just goes to Trout this time around. And he'll be leading the charge. No ultimate for another 50 seconds, but they're still ready to fight. He's got the Manta. He's scouting it out. We'll take a look at Dire Vision here. And they're pretty dark in this quadrant of the map. They don't know what's going on. They've got a ward down in the jungle, but they don't need Vision, though. Yeah, they're smoked up. They're feeling brave. They have tanky heroes. The only way they die is with a blink hex from Lion. Down bottom, Lust very brave with a Ghost Scepter on against Sumail. Kiting him around, Sumail pump faking the Requiem. He can't find him, he's getting juked by Lust. He finally sees him. He's messing around, he's playing with his food before he eats it. No, he didn't see him, Sumail! Oh no! Lust, he doesn't have a TP scroll or a blink. And he is gonna live. This spotty dog. I guess Sumail didn't look at the inventory, but now Sumail TP's up top. Needs to be careful here. Snot comes in. Oh no, he stutter steps. Can't get off the initiation. Oh, the lion. He had a hex, but he couldn't use it. Now Trout going in. Doing a lot of damage with the Blade Fury to squish him up. Gets stunned. Does get hexed. Also has an ultimate here. The Spirit Bomb coming out once more. Sumail just playing with him. Pump faking. Oh, we saw this happen last time. Okay, now they get the kill on Lion. Everyone else from E-Hug makes it out, but... Swagger Fiend to the extreme, dude. I, I'm telling you, I like this guy's style. Yeah. He's swagging on him. This young man. It's kind of easy when you have 20 minutes of free farm. I wonder where he's from. I wonder what country Sumail hails from. I feel like it has more zest when you can say, you know, Zai, the 15 year old Swedish prodigy. It adds like a little, little zinc to it. You say, he's just 15, you know? <laughs> I wonder if he lives in New Jersey. We'll ask him. So 21 to 15, 30 minutes in, it's still root and control. 10,000 gold, 12,000 experience. Just cruising around and having a little bit of fun with it as they are certainly in control. There's the butterfly. Prepare to flutter, Merlini. Sumail, he's getting big. Damn, that is one farm Shadow Fiend. And Lust gonna die. Mm -hmm. Spirit Bomb, whoa! Gets silenced, forces out an ultimate and lust. He'll pop his Radiant ghost scepter. This may backfire. 
Seamal says, fool me once, not gonna fool me again, silly Raptor Rider. <laughs> Battle Fury mid, and meanwhile in the mid lane, the rest of Root just pressuring this tier 2 tower. I feel like E-Hug just don't have a plan here. They're just getting picked apart, and I mean, it is a rough place to be in. There's not a hell of a lot they can do, but this kind of sitting back, playing it safe is definitely not going to turn this one around. Night Stalker has his basher that you were talking about. If they had a better late game, maybe. Ursa working on a basher, maybe that's the beginnings of an MKB. Trout just tanking the tower, feeling all right for now, losing some mana, but where's the defense? Danger 7 just jumps right in, Snog gets destroyed as the Blink Dagger brothers make their presence known. The Dark Lord is here. Glyph's already been used. Tier 3 falls. It's all on the line here, E-Hug. Something's got to happen. Gruul. Here we go. He gets Yuled. Oh, no. The Spirit Bomb. Merlini. BKB. Sumail. Not going to be able to get it off. BKBs are used now. They'll bring down the Aegis. And Danger 7's reincarnation. BKBs have been popped by E-Hug. And Root will look for the reset. No actual kills coming to fruition from the E-Hug side. And here we go, the ultimate from Disruptor, the swap out from Joik to try to keep the Shadow Fiend alive. It'll be successful, but it will cost Avenge her life. Now the Bruce Split Sun, they're gonna go back onto Infinity. Omni Slash was saved, utilized, and it secures the kill. Now Trout in the front lines, using the magic immunity. Sumail TPs up, he blinks up rather, brings down the Raptor and E-Hug really on their last leg. It'll at least be a mid lane of barracks off this push, maybe more. Tier two tower in the bottom still standing, but I think Root can just go right towards the top. Yeah, they ping it out. They're not leaving yet. I think that's game. They, they really can't do anything at this point. I think a lot of it just came from the tri-lane. It went decently for them, but Root's tri-lane was just really, really strong. Even if you can't, uh, if, if they don't beat it, like it still keeps the supports on bottom, which is really important for the Shadow Fiend. If Shadow Fiend doesn't have any interruption in that mid lane, it's an easy, easy win versus the Shadow Fiend. And what's your Brew going to do? Rotate versus Shadow Fiend too? Like, maybe. But he was busy farming his Blink and trying to fend off the Juggernaut. So, another Spirit Bomb here is Brewmaster. Implodes. And we could be moments from a GG here. Yep, there it is. E-Hug tap out. Game number one going to Root. And pretty handily. I have to admit, Root just seemed to be a step ahead. Let that Swagger Fiend farmed up, farm up the storm and... But felt like both the Ursa and the Night Stalker picks kind of didn't work out. Ursa, like you mentioned, did okay in lane, but had the really late mask and just couldn't really. Well, it wasn't his fault. Farm it, much, yeah. Him versus Wraith King, right. they were about the even, right? It, yeah. I think it was Brood not using a lot of ults mid game because the Yules pickup actually destroyed him. Yeah. And then on top of that, the mid matchup was just terrible for Night Stalker. Yeah. So Sumail ending 10, 1, and 5. Huge GPM at 810, 922 XP per minute. That was his game, man. He tore it up. We'll see. Can E-Hug come back and take us into an ace match, or will it be another 2-0 to take us to the grand finals where Team Fire is awaiting the victor of this series? Time will tell. Stick with us, folks, because we're coming right back for the conclusion of this series after this short break. <laughs> 